Welcome, thanks for coming. We're super excited for our first workshop here. Um, tonight we're gonna be talking all about potty training tips and tricks. At the end, we'll leave time for Q&A. Um, so you guys can save them, write them down. Um, in front of you, you guys have the slides and a potty training um, star chart will get there. And then on the back, a feedback form if you'll give that to the end and put it in the gold basket at the back. That would be great. But thank you so much for coming. We're so excited to have you guys and this will be one of many that we're gonna do. So I'm Brooke. Um, I'm so excited to be here and you're like, this is weird, it's the pre-K teacher. Now she thinks she's the potty train expert, but this is actually what I do. Um, so I went to school for a long time and I got my master's degree in ECE. I work here during the day and at night I work at Cal State Long Beach, Long Beach City College and OCC. So I lecture in child development. Um, I also have done a lot of trainings, workshops. I also work for licensing and do workshops for them. So I wear a lot of hats, but I love what I do so it doesn't feel like work every day. Um, I'm extremely passionate about the field of ECE and couldn't love your kids more, all the kids more, and all the great things that they do every day. Um, so thank you for allowing me today to share this passion with you all, and I hope you take something away. I guarantee we'll get something out of this, so thanks for being here tonight. So the first thing with potty training to remember, it is a journey. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint, and you're gonna be doing it. I still have kids in my room who have accidents. So it's not just you potty train them one night, you walk away and it's fine. However, I've never not potty trained a kid. So I have a 100% success rate. So it's possible, okay? Um, every kid is different and everyone will potty train at their own time, when they're ready, in their own way. But I'm gonna to try to help you get the main quirks of it. If you look up potty training online, you're gonna see 101 ways to potty train. This is the way that's worked for me. However, I'm not a mom yet, one day hopefully. Um, but this is what's worked in the classroom for me. So I'll share that today. And the biggest thing is to know it's okay. It's gonna be hard, but we're gonna get through it together. So some things we're gonna talk about today, transitioned underwear, routines, timing, potty charts, rewards, potty procedures, and some resources that you guys could take home today. So the big question, when do I potty train my kid? I've heard you all ask that a few times to your lead teachers or think about it. So here are the big signs that I would say to look for when your child is interested in the potty. That's number one. If they're super interested, go with it. Number two, when their potty is mostly dry. So you want their diaper to be mostly dry and they recognize what is in their diaper. We need them to have language. If they do not have language, it makes it very difficult for you to know when they need to go. You want them to start off by saying, I have poo-poo in my diaper. That's a huge start. So all the toddlers should be working on that Anytime you find them hiding in a corner, have them use that language. What's in your diaper? I have poo-poo in my diaper. Okay, let's go change you. Um, so they're recognizing what's in it. Some kids will even say, it's wet. It's wet. I need a new diaper. So if they're recognizing that, they're able to realize, I just went. They need to be able to control their bodily functions. Otherwise, it won't work. Number three, they're making more success in the potty than their diaper. So we want them to have success in the potty. However, I've had kids that have had zero success in the potty. The parents just cut them off one day and it worked, but it made it way harder. So you want some success in the potty. So with that, you're gonna want them to try the potty often. Every time they're getting a diaper, have them sit on the potty, have them try it, get used to it. And then number four, when your child is wanting to wear underwear and asking about it, we want them to be excited about it so if they're excited about it, but you're hesitant, if they're wanting to do it, go for it. But we need the other signs with that too. You don't want to potty train too young because there will be a regression. And then however, it depends on each one of the child's personalities. Some kids are so stubborn and 
they're going to be the cold turkey type. They're the kid who won't sit on the potty, but they're coming up on three. You need them to get to pre-K. So you're like, I'm cutting you off. That's a cold turkey kind of guy that you would cut off because they're stubborn. But you know they could do it. Then three age. I would say about two and a half to three is a good age. Two for some that are more advanced maybe. Um, however, if they're too young and not verbal, then it does make it very difficult to know when to take them. And then development. Each kid has a different development, so that is a huge factor into that. And then your schedule. So you're not gonna do it when you're moving. You're not gonna do it when you are switching them to a big kid bed. Any little transition to a kid is huge. So you're not gonna do it when you're working too much or traveling. You wanna be consistent. So those are all things to think about when you're thinking, when should I do this? So with that, we're gonna work on our routine and timing. The regular potty routine would be right when they wake up, have them try the potty, mid-morning, before nap, and after nap, mid-afternoon, before the bath, before bedtime. So those are all times when you're probably changing their diaper that you can have them sit on the potty and try. And then when you are potty training, you're going for it, you put them in underwear, you want to take them every 30 minutes. So a lot of people have an Alexa at home. That will be your best friend. Set that for every 30 minutes. It's hard to remember. It's also Alexa telling them to go potty and not you, um, which is often easier. Once you're like, OK, this is kind of redundant, then you're going to go to every 45 minutes, then to every hour. Um, there is potty watches on Amazon that the kid can wear and it can go off. Depends on their personality, if they're into that or not. Some kids, that's the golden trick, the ones who want the eye watches. Um, but an Alexa works, a normal kitchen timer. Um, and then at school, you would want the teachers to be taking them that often as well. So we're ready. We're going for it. So the number one thing you're going to do, you're going to get your equipment ready at home. You're going to get step stools. You want easy access to the potty. Step stools. There's toilet seats that have the little child size that come down. That's perfect. That's a potty seat. You can go to Target, Amazon, buy the one that sits on the potty, whatever. Underwear. Take the kids shopping with you. Have them pick out the coolest underwear, even if you're like, seriously, that's what we're picking? Blippy? Um, yeah, you're going to go with it. Whatever makes them excited, go for it. Take them with you. Make it a fun event, um, lots of extra clothes. Um, underwear, I would suggest not the padded underwear. Feels way more like a diaper, um, so just normal underwear. And then extra clothes. When you're bringing them to school, please bring extra clothes. Uh, lots of extra clothes. And Natives or Crocs are wonderful shoes when you're potty training, way easier to clean for the teachers um, and for you guys at home. Potty books. Here's a few examples today of some potty books. Um, everyone's favorite tiger, Daniel Tiger. He's got a lot of great books. Here he is right here on a pretend potty seat. Um, this, is my, this isn't from my classroom. My kids love it with the baby dolls. This is a great way just to introduce and start talking about the potty. They're one, but they're interested. They're having their stuffies try. That's an easy way to incorporate it. Lots of different books. I know a lot of the kids in this group especially love Paw Patrol. So Paw Patrol has a potty book too. Just get things that they're excited about so it makes it more exciting for them and they want to do it. Um, diapers are not forever. That's another one. It's a good one to talk about when we're getting rid of our diapers. Next one, we're going to need our potty chart in your pamphlet. You guys have a simple one and rewards. We'll talk a little bit about rewards in the next slide. Then you're going to plan it out. You're going to get a calendar, mark it on there. December 1st, we're going for it. Now you're going to make sure your life and work schedule is as free as possible. That's difficult as working parents. But you're going to want three days at home, at least, based on your kid. Could be faster, could be four, could be five. But three days consistent in a row. Um, usually the weekend's easy to do that. 
maybe take off a Friday from work or a Monday, stay at home all of those three days, and then when you bring them back to school, you feel more confident in them um, and their ability. And you're telling your teachers, you're working with them. It's a partnership. Like, hey, so-and-so, this Friday we're potty training. Do you have any tips, anything we could do? Can you help me pump them up? If we work together, we make it all more exciting, then they're more willing to do that. The next one is stick to the plan. So a lot of the time, it's easy to give in, but we want to be consistent. If we're going for it, we're going for it. You're having that child help you throw the diapers away. There are no diapers anymore, only for nighttime or only for nap time. But if you're going for it, you're not switching back and forth. Consistency is key here. And then don't talk yourself out of it. This is when we can all rely on each other. Um, you guys can reach out to me, you can reach out to your teachers. But you're going to need some motivation to stick with it. It's going to be hard. Um, but put it on the calendar and keep those three days at least clear. So here are some supplies we talked about. So you're going to have your potty books and your potty step stool. You can have a potty book in the bathroom. It's a fun way to have it. You're going to be sitting on the floor in the bathroom for many hours. Um, so make it cozy for you and for them. And you don't want to rely on putting the iPad on while they're in the potty. Sometimes it loses their muscle control because they're so fixated on the one. So a book is a good way to distract them. Maybe you're waiting for them to go poop for the first time. You're going to be sitting on the floor for a long time. You know they have to go. A book is a great way to read and pass the time. Um, and it makes it more exciting. Maybe just the potty train is the only one that's always in the bathroom for them. But we read these other ones at night. And then here's our potty chart right here. And then a step stool, all of the things. Yeah. Um, so some people like the little potties. Some people like the big potties. That is completely up to you. However, when you're going to Target and your child has only gone on the little potty on the floor, then you go to Target and they really have to pee, it's kind of hard for them to switch it in their mind. And they can get nervous with the real flush. Um, in the past, I had a kid who literally thought the toilet was going to suck them down the drain. <laughs> and I had to do everything in my power to hold her above the potty so she didn't get sucked in. And I couldn't figure out, this is her first day in underwear, I couldn't figure out why the fear of the flushing. You know, this is normal, we're always in here, we try it. And her mom was like, oh yes, she only will use the little one and the, the little one that doesn't flush, it sings the song instead. And I'm like, okay, well we have a real phobia now. Um, <laughs> so then we're adding more problems to our already stressful situation. So if they have not, they're still young, you haven't introduced them to anything, go for a real potty at home. It'll make your life easier. You can still use a small potty if you're introducing both. Um, however, just going in general is what we want. So wherever they're gonna go, we'll take. Um, some people have the little portable potties in their bath, in their car. So in a hurry, you're at Target and they won't go in the real bathroom, you go to your car. Um, completely up to you guys, but that is all things that I've had parents in the past do. All right, we're gonna do this, it's day one. We're gonna put all of the diapers and the pull-ups away. Hide them. And if they ask for one to go poop, don't give it to them. Um, I've had many kids that will only go poop in their diaper and the parents would keep giving it back to them because they wanted them to go. They don't want them to be constipated. Understand that, but it's gonna make your life harder because they're every single time they're gonna rely on it like a crutch. Um, you're gonna have your child help you. You're, you already went to Target, you got the cool underwear, they're excited, they knew about it, it's on the calendar. And you're gonna put on clothing that is easy to take off or no pants, completely your preference. If you just want underwear, that's fine. If you want no underwear and you want them to run free, completely up to you, either one will work. All you want is something easy to take off in the moment. So I would probably start with just underwear and a shirt um, and have them run around the house all day. And every 30 minutes, you're gonna take them. Even if they say, I don't have to go, you're gonna take them. Um, see how that goes? They're gonna have accidents, that's okay. They have to figure out what it feels like to be wet. They kind of have to be uncomfortable as well. Day two, this is when it becomes reality. 
most day ones, they're not going to go poop. They're going to hold it in. Day two, they start figuring it out. And you're going to continue taking every 30 minutes, and you have to stay consistent. Now, day three, they're definitely constipated. You're going to be sitting on the bathroom floor for many hours. I literally spent four hours in a preschool classroom on the floor. And luckily, I had great teachers that would help me so I could do that. And we sat there, and I was like, we're not leaving this bathroom until you go, because I know you have to go. And uh, we did it. And when, we, when he finally went poop, it was the biggest celebration, right? That's when you go to Target, and you buy the cool, really cool reward that they've been working for. Um, usually after the first poop in the toilet, if they haven't been going during potty training, smooth sailing from there. But the biggest thing is staying consistent. Day three, you can maybe get out in the car, do a short trip, maybe one quick round target, come back. However, make sure there's always access to that potty. And if you're going to put them in a car, I would put a puppy pad in their car seat. Just makes it easier for you guys when you clean it. Um, however, do not put them back in the diaper. And then day four, we're back. Our goal is to be back to normal, normal life, normal routine, and school. However, if you think your child is not quite there, keep them home. Um, teachers often have more than one child to look over. And if you have the ability to stay at home with your child and give them that one-on-one -on -one every hour, it would help them. It would help the teachers as well. Um, but if not, the teachers can handle it. Any teacher can do it. Um, and they'll be ready to go as long as they know that you are coming in underwear that day. That helps them prepare, maybe drink some extra coffee in the morning, um, wear yoga pants or shoes that if they get peed on, you know, they have backup clothes. We've all been peed on too. So, so that's our day four. That is potty training in a nutshell right there on four days. So our tips to success. Accidents are going to happen normal and it's going to be okay so you're going to want to talk to them about it i noticed you had an accident why do you think that happened maybe next time when you're playing with your trains and you feel like you have to go maybe you could stop and go right away that's daniel tiger um, right there is a simple way to talk to them understand what happened and move on it's okay we're gonna move on limit the power struggle this is hard with the toddler. They have a lot of uh, strong feelings. So instead of being like, okay, you say you don't want to go potty. Okay, five more minutes. No, five more minutes. Nope. When that timer goes, we're going. Consistency. Be gentle and kind. However, you can be firm at some. Like the timer says we have to go, so we have to go. The timer said it, not me. Um, that's gentle. It's kind, but still firm. You mean what you said. And then... We don't want to shame them for accidents. If you shame them for accidents, they're going to have a way harder time potty training. They're not doing it on purpose. They're working on their bowel movements. If they're 10 having accidents at school, different story. You know, they, they might be doing that one on purpose. And then you're going to be prepared. You're going to have extra clothes. You're going to have extra sheets ready. You're going to have your laundry going 24 seven. Um, maybe remove some rugs in your house. Maybe keep them outside um, and maybe don't play at the water table because that's going to make them go more often. Um, but you could put a puppy pad underneath their sheet in the crib. Um, as a teacher, I'd put it under their cot. They're sleeping. They can't control it when they're sleeping at that age and it just makes the cleanup a little bit easier. Make it exciting. So your children, our children, all children, feed off our energy when we're like, Oh, I have to potty train you. They're going to feel that. So if you're excited about it, then they're going to be excited about it. It's like one of the most exciting times. It's like a huge milestone. So when they're excited, you're going to be excited. And then invite them into the process. Have your child pick out their own special underwear, and then you're going to count down the days to say bye-bye to diapers. Um, and you can have them help you with all of that. Nighttime potty training comes later, so don't worry about the nighttime at all. You can reserve these diapers for nighttime only, um, the pull-ups for nighttime only, and then when they're fully asleep, they cannot control their bladder, so just know it's going to happen, and that's okay. Most of them probably still sleep in a crib, and they can't even climb up to get to the potty anyway, so 
you would just tell you, that's okay, your diapers are just for nighttime only, um, or you can buy special ones that look different than the white ones they use. And the last tip on this one, we're gonna start practicing now. So if your child is not yet ready, that's okay. But have them start trying the potty now while wearing their diaper. So you want them to start feeling what it feels like to sit. And when they accidentally go, you're gonna make a huge deal out of it, you're gonna celebrate it. The first time they pee in the potty is usually an accident. But you're gonna still make them really excited about it and then they'll start figuring out their muscle control. Um, and that's when they start realizing like, oh, I do have to go, this is how it happens. So you can do a stand-up diapering to make it go faster. And then if your child is in diapers, I would suggest no pull-ups just because they do feel a lot like a diaper. So yeah, that's my own personal thing on that, but they do feel a lot like a diaper. So it is not any different for them. If they think it's easier to pull up and down, that's totally fine, but don't use it as a crutch to potty training. So potty charts and rewards. Something as simple as a sticker really motivates them. Special stickers that they can use every time they go. So here's a sample chart. You guys have it in your packet today. Every time they go pee, they get one sticker. Every time they go poop, they get two stickers. If they fill this whole thing up, we go to Target. You buy really cool item. Or you take them before. You have it sitting in the corner of the bathroom and you motivate them that way. You get that once we fill up this chart, but you cannot have it till we fill up this chart. That's when the consistency comes through. Don't give in. Mm -hmm. um, small treats for every time your child goes potty. Start small, because if you start with a monster truck for the first pee, you're gonna be spending a lot of money, um, and you're gonna have a lot of cars. So some kids are really food motivated, and they like M&Ms. One mini M&M works great. Some kids are not food motivated. You can go for a sticker or I, it really depends on the child of what they like. Um, the Dollar Tree, Amazon, prize boxes, something small. Um, and then you're gonna work towards that bigger goal. So when you fill this up, we can go to Target and pick whatever you want. Over time, you're gonna start weaning off the rewards. They're gonna slowly forget about it. We're just gonna keep moving on. Otherwise, they're gonna have every toy in the world by six. Um, in the future, there will be regressions, normal. Go back to the basics. Go back to the sticker charts. Um, I did this recently for a child. I only needed the sticker chart for four days and we haven't had any accidents for three weeks. So it's crazy how much one sticker will motivate them. So procedures. So when girls are sitting down, they're gonna sit while slightly leaning forward on the potty. When they're wiping, you're gonna make sure that they're going front to back to prevent any illnesses or infections. And then boys, typically it's easier when they stand up. However, it depends on your potty. Um, here we have urinals, so standing up is often easier for them. In the smaller classrooms, they just have normal potties. However, anything works. We don't care how it happens as long as it happens. Um, but you need them to practice their aim with a boy. So you could put a Cheerio in the toilet, aim at the Cheerio. You could put food coloring in the toilet water, aim at the blue water. Um, anything that's different and new will excite them. Um, I had a child that would only go if the water was blue. I'll make it blue every time if it works, and it did. Um, but all children you wanna work on are self-help skills and encourage it. So you want them to be able to pull up their pants, their underwear themselves, pull them up, pull them down, and wash their hands. That's big on hygiene. And when they're potty training, you still want them to practice this every single time. And self-help skills, wiping. When they're little, any poop, teachers will wipe, you will all wipe. But with pee, we want them to be able to figure that out. So here are some more resources. Um, my favorite tiger is Daniel Tiger for sure. I know he's a favorite in the preschool classroom right now. Um, but he has a song that when you have to go potty, stop and go right away. Flush and wash and be on your way. 
that's all it takes sometimes, just singing that. Um, you can get a little Daniel Tiger stuffy, you can have a toilet next to him, you can read the books about him. He has a TV show all about it. He, this episode is all about potty training. Daniel gets into underwear. Watch that. There's a Paw Patrol one too, I've heard. So if we can't beat them, join them. Um, and then this is an article, it's from Zero to Three Organization. Um, it's a resource that is a great resource to have. I can send you guys all this PowerPoint so you guys can click the links directly. And then some closing statements. You guys can do this. Um, like I said, I have a 100% success rate, so I can help you guys and your teachers can all help you too. Plan ahead. So if you know you're moving in six months, we're doing it after that. If you know your life is going to be crazy, you're going to wait and do it after that. But you have to make sure that you are consistent. That is the number one key here. And we are here for you. I can speak for myself, any of the teachers. Um, they are all here for you. If you work together with them, if you work together with other parents, it doesn't seem as daunting. It seems a little bit more fun. But it takes a village. So make sure you and your partner are on the same page about this. We're both going for it at the same time. Your teacher agrees that it's a good idea. So talk to them first before you just go for it. But it really does take a village and it's not, it's not gonna be easy. And that's okay. So do we have any questions? Yeah? So during the three days, mm -hmm. are we, do you use pull-ups at night or you don't use pull-ups at night? I would use a diaper, just preference, but yeah. Okay. Diaper or pull-up, something at night, yeah. Even for nap too, if, okay. yeah, if you don't want to clean the pee accidents, that's totally fine. Yeah. For the boys, when you said to practice both, mm -hmm. you mean toilet plus urinal or? Standing up and sitting down, oh, yeah, easy. yeah. But some boys pee sitting down. Um, most kids will sit first and they you'll teach them to push their pee pee down between their legs and close their legs and then you're going to close their legs for them and hold them the second you let go their pee is going to come up and pee on the wall and you so make sure it's tucked down so you can teach them tuck down close your legs and then eventually you graduate to pee standing yes and if your child does not want to sit and is not into sitting then you can try standing and you would teach them to aim whatever they prefer yeah so I would start in the beginning with seeing if they like sitting then just go for sitting for them if they like standing run with the standing totally on preference yeah most of the time the first time they'll sit down because um, you want them to figure out how to poop sitting down too of course um, so that is fine but some kids I've had boys that would refuse to sit so we just practice standing and one day it started coming, and I was like, aim, 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 and they figured it out. I mean, we had to clean, but it's okay. Um, and then they figured out after that how this is how it works. Yeah, so whatever, whatever, we really let them kind of lead it in a way. Anything else? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if they do have an accident, I know you kind of went like went over it a little mm -hmm. bit, but is it more of just acknowledging like that they did have an accident yeah. and next time you feel like you need to do that again, let's go to the bathroom? Yeah, perfectly okay. said. Yep, exactly. Like, how does it feel when you're wet? I would ask questions. Not, probably not great, right? Um, sometimes they'll start crying like, it's wet, it's sticky. And then you're like, yeah, exactly. That's why we want to make sure we don't get our clothes wet. Um, with girls, it's pretty easy. You don't want to get your princess underwear wet. That's usually all it takes. Um, with boys, if you find a really cool character that they love, you will say that too when you put it on them. You want to keep these clean so you can wear them all day. Um, you're such a big kid. And then if they do have it, that's okay. It happens. But how does it feel? I know you had an accident, but next time let's stop what we're doing and go instead. Um, and they're going to have poop accidents, and they're going to have pee accidents, but acknowledging it, but then moving on. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So do they know that the difference between the padded underwear and the regular underwear? Yeah. yeah. They do know the difference. Yeah, it feels way more like a diaper. Yeah. It, it does catch a lot more pee, the padded underwear. 
However, it does feel a lot more like a diaper. So they feel it. If they only go a little bit, they won't feel it. Um, where in the normal underwear, if you go a little bit, they'll still feel it. Okay. Yeah. And the girls often care a little bit more about being wet <laughs> than the boys. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've had boys often potty train a little bit later than girls. Um, not, not a problem, just that's when they're ready. Um, but I've had girls that potty train way later than boys too. So it really depends on the child where they're at, where they're feeling. Yeah. Um, why, are, why do they regress sometimes? Like, yeah. Like we were on momentum. Yeah, he's going <laughs> now. He doesn't want to at all. Like he will not go potty at all? No. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's back to it at school. Yeah, yeah, he's going oh, thank goodness. Okay. Yeah, he's Okay. Look at that. I have two days. <laughs> but often they're I different no. at school. <laughs> often, I would say happy. Fast fire at school. He doesn't have fast fire at school either. <laughs> yeah. But he's got padded underwear. Yeah, it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. It's all fine. <laughs> but you're introducing <laughs> it to him. <laughs> Yeah, in, and then I would never take a pacifier away and a diaper away at the same time or anywhere near each other. So if you're going for the pacifier, do that first if that is your bigger goal. If underwear is your bigger goal, then then go for that. Okay. I just wonder sometimes why they regress. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, we kind of went off with that. But, yes, <laughs> um, there's a many, many different reasons. The consistency stops by us. Um, maybe they had a fear of the toilet. Maybe at home you're working more and he's feeling that or the sister's getting bigger. They feel that. They're, it could be literally anything. You moved houses. You moved the toilet from one room to another room. They won't say that, but it's any little change is enough to throw off their routine. Yeah, there's not, it's hard to get into their mind. But you have to think like a two-year-old, like, yeah. <laughs> why are you so mad at me right now? And then 20 minutes later, you love me. This is confusing, but... Um, yeah, it could literally be any, anything. If you're trying to change the bed, it's another one that really throws off the whole routine and rocks them. Um, any little change is enough to, yeah. At what point do you um, not have a diaper at night? Is it like when they're like? When they're dry. When okay. they wake up and that diaper is still dry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Great question. Yeah. And at nap, do you guys do diapers at nap? or? you just keep them in the underwear? Um, I had some parents who specifically once they got to a point where they also noticed that the diaper was staying dry, they asked us to not do that. We had some parents who were more comfortable, hey, um, we're still in the early stages, they're doing pretty well at home, but we would be more comfortable for you to have put that on at night time. So we'll do both. For right now, we don't have any friends who are, I guess, potty trained that are wearing diapers. Yeah. And even if you want them to try at school, because they're different at school that's cool too usually when I potty trained a kid at school I would say don't bring me any diapers I don't want any of them they're not here for your child and during nap if they have an accident I'm gonna change them and just let them sleep in their underwear it's a good way to have a trial run like I said they're usually uh, better listeners for the teachers that's a whole nother but we're thankful for that so <laughs> yeah anything else these are great questions Mm -hmm. Oh, no, 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 no. I wouldn't say more than five days. Yeah, send them back to routine in life. And if they're at school five days a week, they're going to figure it out with their teachers. Yeah. I would say not more than four. I think four is pushing it. I had many parents that were like, I'm going to take a week off. And I'm like, no, because sometimes it's different, right? Like they're having a harder time with you than if you just send them and they're great with their teacher all day, you know? They're going to get used to the routine at school as well. So let's go no more than five days and do a weekend. So, yeah. Yeah. So both our boys have younger siblings, mm -hmm. and they're going to be still in diapers. And, like, that might be a challenge if they still see the diapers mm -hmm. around all the time. So is it, would you recommend just saying they still need them? They're yeah. younger. Let's yeah. Just exactly. Yeah, still. explain that. Yeah, they're, they're too little. Um, they don't have the words yet to tell me they need to go potty or they're still a baby and you're a big kid now. Mm -hmm. Just keep pumping them up, the big kid aspect of it. Yeah. Okay. Same thing with like a bottle, if you're cutting the bottles too. 
yeah, the baby uses that, but you're, you know, you're a big kid. There's books all about being big kids too, if we need to really sell that aspect of it too. Um, but often if you pump it up enough, they're gonna be really excited about it. Also using it, to, if you wanna get to the new classroom or be on the big kid side, that's another way. I've had a lot of kids that had to get potty trained to come to my preschool classroom and the parent only way they could do it is if you just told them, you want to go to the big kid class, then you got to get potty trained. Um, so there's a goal, too, of that. Yeah. Anything else? Well, if you do have more questions, that's okay. You can email me. Um, but those are great. So here's my email. It's also on there. Um, you can also follow us on social media. We're trying to post more tips and tricks on there. Um, And thank you guys so much for coming. On the back page, there's a feedback form. If you could please fill that out, that'd greatly appreciate us. We want to incorporate more workshops. Um, so if you give me some ideas of what you'd want to learn, that would be wonderful. Thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.